Now, before we start, you might want to check out our other podcasts covering topics like personal development and minimalism, money, health, relationships, and more. So to optimize your life in other areas, just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app. Now on to the show. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1944. The Thing That Retirees Regret the Most and How to Avoid It by Mark Dennis of FinancialFinesse.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our weekly bonus episode here on Optimal Relationships Daily, brought to you by me, Greg Audino. Now, in case you're new to the show, each Sunday, in addition to our regularly scheduled post, we also do a bonus episode that features a previous airing from another show in our network. This way, you can get a taste of everything we have to offer, maybe check out some of our other shows should they touch upon topics you like. We also cover personal development, health, work, and finance, which today's post will be about. So without further ado, let's hear Diana, our narrator on Optimal Finance Daily, read this post and offer her commentary as we optimize your life. The Thing That Retirees Regret the Most and How to Avoid It by Mark Dennis of FinancialFinesse.com It is said that no one on their deathbed ever wished they worked just a little longer. The same may not be said for U.S. retirees, however. Among average earners, Social Security payments are likely to make up more than half of their retirement income. The odds seem pretty good that more than a few of them wish they had worked a little longer, or at least waited longer before claiming their Social Security benefits. Maturity and Social Security As a financial planner, I spend much of my time talking with people about their concerns regarding retirement. One of my favorite questions to ask is, at what age do you plan to claim your Social Security retirement benefit? More often than not, they tell me, as soon as I can get it, which is age 62, unless you're a widow or a widower, then it can be as early as 60. While earlier may not always be better, they have plenty of company. As many as 57% of recent retirees choose to claim this benefit prior to full retirement age, locking themselves into a lifetime of 25 to 30% smaller Social Security payments. Claiming your Social Security early may turn out to be one of your biggest regrets in retirement. A recent study conducted by the National Bureau of Economic Research concluded that early Social Security claims are linked to increased likelihood of living in poverty in one's old age. Why do so many people willingly limit themselves to a smaller Social Security payment when they could be receiving so much more by waiting a few more years to claim? Oddly, only about 4% of retirees delay collecting Social Security beyond their full retirement age. Why people retire when they do? The reality is that people retire and claim Social Security retirement benefits for a variety of reasons, a combination of individual circumstances, knowledge, economic conditions, and even personal emotions influence our decisions about retirement. While some factors are largely uncontrollable, two of them, knowledge and emotion, are well within our ability to master. Employers downsize, family members require care, or our own declining health forces us to leave behind the world of work, company benefits, and steady paychecks. Not having sufficient emergency savings or a backup plan for retirement would be regrettable when these unforeseen events happen. What they regret. Our personal economics also can drive retirement decisions. Waiting too late to contribute to a retirement plan can lead us to regret working longer than we expected. Hoping our health holds out long enough to catch up and really regretting things if our health falters or carrying large amounts of debt for many years can drag down our ability to save and invest, leading to more retirement regret. The combination of what we do or don't know about retirement can shape our decisions. For example, everyone knows the typical retirement age is 65, right? Or is it 62? Not so fast. The Social Security retirement age for full, unreduced benefits has changed. Depending upon your birth year, it may be as late as 67. Accordingly, the age at which you claim Social Security can make a significant difference on your retirement lifestyle. Getting in touch with your emotions. As you might imagine, emotions, positive and negative, also play a role in making regret-free retirement decisions. 
For example, the mere fact that Social Security is available at age 62, though reduced by 25 to 30 percent, can influence how we feel about working at that point. Work may suddenly seem optional. We now have a guaranteed way to receive money without working, which appears to encourage earlier retirement. As with most major decisions, though, letting our emotions be our primary retirement guide can lead to more regress later. What if we do live to be 95 years old, like the folks at living2100.com recently suggested? Do I want to be stuck with the smallest possible social security check for 30 years? No regrets. The emotional or effective behavior aspect of retirement decisions has and continues to be of great interest to me. So much so that I made it the subject of my doctoral dissertation regarding the influence of emotional states upon social security retirement decisions. My own research concluded that a combination of both emotion and education can have a measurable effect upon when people choose to make important retirement decisions. What can you do to make the best decision for yourself? Fortunately, among the many factors that influence retirement, our knowledge and our emotions are two conditions over which we also have some individual levels of control. Among the many retirees whom I've counseled and guided over the years, those who eased most successfully into retirement, number one, made time to be as informed as possible, reading up on their own, consulting with trusted financial professionals, or utilizing their financial wellness benefits at work. They sought knowledge. Number two, tuned into their emotions. I'm not going to get all touchy-feely, but it's critical to recognize when our feelings begin to overshadow our logic and lead us down decisional paths that may not be in our best long-term interest. The American Psychological Association encourages people to consider their psychological portfolios along with their financial portfolios when preparing for retirement. My financial planner colleague, Doug Spencer, also recently wrote about ways to be mentally prepared for retirement, which includes even more tips on how to fill your retirement with more memories and fewer regrets. You just listened to the post titled, The Thing That Retirees Regret the Most and How to Avoid It by Mark Dennis of FinancialFinesse.com. This episode is brought to you by Regain Couples Therapy by BetterHelp. Whether you're in the honeymoon phase or partners for life, perfectly content with your partner or going through a rough patch, setting aside time to listen to each other and work through conflicts can transform your relationship. And I can tell you from experience that sometimes the best place to learn how to be the listener or communicator that your partner needs is in therapy. If your relationship is having ups and downs or you simply want to work on yourselves together, consider giving Regain a try and see how your relationship can improve, no matter what stage you're at. This is an entirely online form of therapy that's not only helpful, but also designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. The best relationships are always worth fighting for. Try something new in therapy. Visit Regain.com slash ORD today to get 10% off your first month. That's Regain.com slash ORD. This article reminded me of what I learned when I was getting out of debt. Self-imposed restriction can be a freeing experience, while externally imposed restriction can be a nightmare. I wanted to learn how to live minimally on my own terms, before it was forced on me due to loss of income or a health scare. And unfortunately, this article is a reminder of regrets that can come up later in life when we don't prepare for retirement. Retirement is the biggest expense of our lives, and it can be a rude awakening in your 50s and 60s to realize that you've set yourself up for externally imposed restriction in your retirement years. When you're young, you can choose to live below your means and save. When you're older, you may have backed yourself into a corner and be forced to live on less or work longer than you'd like, simply because you didn't save and invest for retirement. While retirement may seem so far away and you have so much time to figure it out, saving for retirement when you're young doesn't just have benefits when you're older. So for example, I'm gonna be 34 this year and I've reached Coast Fi. This means that if I don't contribute any more money to my retirement vehicles, 
There's enough in there that in 30 years, due to the magic of compound interest, I'll be able to retire comfortably. But I'm reaping the benefits of that right now. It's like I've unlocked this level of wealth building where I don't need to worry as much about saving. I just need to meet my yearly expenses until traditional retirement if I decide that's better for me than trying to reach FI earlier. There is simply less pressure. And that allowed me to take the foot off the gas on my income and leave my nine to five job this year. I've been able to open up more time and space in my life now while also ensuring that I've planned for my future. That should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on the Wednesday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.